Good evening. I wrap in with your Spider ETF stock market wrap up, and this wrap up is for a rough trading day on Tuesday, the 13th of February, 2024. Well, I hope Valentine's Day is a lot sweeter than today was, because this is one heck of a rough day any way you want to cut it. Take a look at the board behind me. Nothing has green on it. You're not colorblind. Nothing has green on it. Even though it acted well today, NVIDIA down still $1.20, Tesla down another $4. We are looking, TLT got smashed. I was looking at Amazon. There were some markets this morning I was so tempted to pull the trigger on, but sometimes you get these type of breaks that can last a couple of days in the market. And let's start with why the market broke before we go anywhere. And it's CPI. You saw price increases in medicine, auto insurance, hospitals, shelter, all over, and it kicked everything up. Month over month, you were up, you were expecting uh, two tenths, you got three tenths. It's not that prices are running away, but it was a big surprise to the market. They expected uh, core, ex food and energy, to be unchanged, about three tenths higher compared to the other month that was higher. Uh, energy prices were down, but everybody knows that this isn't gonna last. Have you looked at what they've done for the month of February? We're only at the 12th, they're dramatically higher. They're up 10% off the, off the recent break in, in uh, gasoline alone. In the consumer price index, you can see year over year, you're up 3.1%. They were expecting a number under three. So the disappointment hit. Now, what else? You've gone in a literal run since October 26, 27 to the upside. I have repeatedly said here, be careful. There's a correction coming. I don't know when, I don't know how. I gave a lecture yesterday here and to, to some of the other people that were asking me, I said, a normal peak to trough break is 13%, but normal breaks in the market, everyday corrections that we're overdue for are three to 5% in stock indices. You, tell, you take a look today, you're gonna see that's in the ballpark you were in. So I'm not surprised. Do I think the game changed? No, but I think the game's ahead of itself. Do I think we're in a dance? Yes, what's the dance? CPI, PPI, NVIDIA. I've said it over and over. Now at the end of the month, we'll get the PCE and that'll smooth out what we've got. But PPI is gonna be important because it gives you an idea. Some of the components there, they're measured different than CPI. And they'll fit in there and they'll give us an idea of how the trade's gonna think the PCE is gonna come out the Fed's favorite. But tonight, Fed members are sitting back and they're going, okay, we weren't wrong. There's bumps along the road. We know, we being the Fed members, that that last mile, to get inflation beaten, we have come down dramatically. We've done a good job. This is the rough road. We also know that there's a lot of adjustments made in the months of January and February to all kinds of things naturally. We see that every year. Number two, what's the second worst month normally of the trade year? It's February. We're only at the 13th. I don't know how much deeper we'll go, if we'll drop more. <clears throat> but I'm looking for weakness, so I'm not surprised. <clears throat> Excuse me. We have no real big numbers tomorrow. You get the Mortgage Bankers Association number. And by the way, speaking of that, did you look at the 10-year note today? So now you're at 432. I woke up this morning, and one of the first things I was reading, about 4 in the morning, um, I haven't been feeling good. I, I, my wife's got... COVID, so I'm wondering, am I starting to come down with it? You know, you get mentally nuts from it. Um, but I'm reading the big bets that were made in the market. And there were $2 million bets, they said. I, I think this was the Bloomberg article I read in the morning. Uh, and they said one was looking for 4275 or 4285. Let me take that back. It was looking for the market to get down, down to 38. 385, or the other bet was looking for the 4-3 area. Those, those were the two. The, the bracketed, different bets by apparently different people. Do I know? I don't know. And I said, okay, that gives me an idea what the pros are looking for. And 
big, you know, million dollar bets are big ones. And, you know, you can measure these bets. The market has a way where you can see, uh, you don't know who's doing it, but you can see the options being bought. And bingo, the 4-3 won the day. And I'm not surprised, and you shouldn't be surprised either. And the reason is nothing grows to the sky. This is a market that is concentrated on six stocks right now that has carried everything with it. And all we keep hearing is, ah, now it's spreading to the other zones. That's almost the kiss of death, all right, when you start hearing that. And as soon as the Russell came alive, I got worried. And I wrote in my newsletter, and it's my subscribers know I said, I promise you at the top of this market, we're gonna lose something back. The name of the game is to trade small. We're gonna have losses right now. We gotta be very careful. It's how it worked out. Not big, very minor. Uh, we'll see what goes on here, all right? So let's take a look at a few of the things. CDNS, look at the outside date of the downside. So that, ended the continuation of the rally. That's what an outside day does. If you don't understand outside days, please, please, please go to my website, irapstein.com. Under the word education is the outside day course. Take it, it's gonna stick with you, all right? So you'd had to have taken out that high either on today, Tuesday, or tomorrow, Wednesday, and I don't think that's gonna happen, for it to say, nah, that's, that's a false reading. Otherwise, a correction. Now, where might you correct? Well, when I look at the market, the last break's lows were down here. It seems to be where you went, but more important to me was the 18-day average of closes, and that's right what you basically went to. Now, if you're gonna correct more, there's big moving averages all the way down, but they're far from where you're at. That's another almost 10% break in the market. So more likely is wherever the Bollinger Band is. And that's coming in around the 284 level. So I wouldn't be surprised if that's where the market wants to get down to. But what you've done is you've taken out of this market the, I gotta own it, I gotta own it, I gotta buy everything. You took that temporarily out of the market. Today was to me a relief day, very much needed. Momentum wise, turning the market down on this, all right. Lift, I'm showing this because I'm watching the earnings come out and they had good earnings, don't get me wrong, the stock in the aftermarket right now is up about 14%. What if I tell you, I'm sitting there watching it and I was watching the CNBC earnings report, which I always watch after the, the close because I wanna see the companies that are reporting who's doing what and what they're saying. And they're talking, yeah, that this is doing actually pretty well. Robinhood came out today and they did better because Robinhood is buying money. I own the brokerage firm, so I know what they're doing. I own the stock firm and commodity firm. Didn't run them, owned. And to make a long story short, what they did is they're out there with their ad and they were buying big accounts. And they're saying, I'll earn money on the interest. Yes, you get some of the spread, they get some of it. So that's what they've done. And they added quite a bit. I think they added, I don't know, I, 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 I forgot the number. It was substantial, like 20% to their deposits. It was a big number. It's a success for what they've done and now they're going international. But let me bring you back to Lyft. So I'm watching Lyft and I go, okay, you know, I don't know anyone. I, I, I don't remember the last time I used Lyft. You know, one of the things that I've learned in life works in the stock market, look around, what do you use? If you're a Lyft user, then you should own Lyft. If you're an Uber user, I use Uber. The only reason I'd use Lyft is I can't get a, a cab on my Uber. That's me, that's not you. All right, I look around my house, what, what do I buy? Am I a Pepsi drinker? Do I drink Coca-Cola? Uh, what tissues do I like? This and that. It works. You will find that when you change what you're doing, away you go. Do you not like McDonald's anymore? You're buying Horton's, uh, Burger King, for example. You move around with all this and you figure out what you like. It's a crazy thing. Somebody taught it to me when I was probably not even out of my, I don't know, teens. And they said, that's a secret. Everything you like, you buy. If you like a brand of car, that's the, that's the stock you want to buy. When you finally say that's a piece of junk, get rid of it. Works pretty interesting. All right, 
So I'm watching the stock, it's up 14%. What if I tell you it went up 65%? I'm watching this and I'm going, somebody's caught. I know just what's happening. Having owned firms and been caught in it when customers get very wrong, somebody got caught wrong in this market. I don't know if it was, it's probably an options play where they ended up naked short. And as the market kept going, the firm had to start taking them out. I don't know, but it smelt. <laughs> Smells just like that's what it was. Now you're up 14%. That person's toasted. There may be debits, you don't know. Option writing is so dangerous. I can only tell you, you get in after the market and you get into thin conditions and you gotta come out, it is living H-E-L-L. -L. It is terrible. That's how thin it can get. So all I'm saying is it found its support level got a bounce and that's why I'm showing it because it did go up over $20. It's off the chart how high it went. You heard what I just said. Here you are at 11. It went to $20 and change. So I don't want you to think when you finish up here at, at uh, 12, 13, $20 and change, it's back to about 15 or 14 right now. In the gasoline fund, this is part of this problem. All right, energy plays a role. And you don't think you've been going up in the UGA? Take a look at this. This market's been going up since the beginning of the year though. People aren't understanding. You're up over 10%. You're gonna get these numbers in the next CPI reading too. In XLF, the financial services, well, today, once you see the big rate increase, boom. Now, what does this also do? You gotta get nervous about what this rate increase means for the tsunami of commercial money that is due on some of these office spaces, all right? This didn't help, this is hell for those people. Now, the industrial sector, finally a break. I didn't, and I've, I've said this to you a hundred times, I don't understand why it rallied that much. I just don't see it. Every one of the Fed districts that keeps reporting says how bad, not how good, manufacturing is. When you open in the morning, you're probably gonna lose your embedded reading just like that. Why? You closed in this way. Now, had you closed at the lows of the day, I'd be more worried than if it fights to stay embedded. It can fight to stay embedded tomorrow. But that's because it didn't close anywhere near the lows of the day. It bounced well off those lows. AMC, I'm looking for the market to stall here. Fight its battle at $4. It's not, in a condition where I love it yet. But as I told you, I wouldn't be surprised to come the spring, summer, that you know the stock's a $6 stock again. RSPD, in looking at the market, well, there you go. Finally, we take out a prior low, but look at the battleground. Does this look to you like a market that's in a state of collapse with the consumer? It, not to me. The 18-day average is the neutral zone. Markets often return there to regroup. Take a look at what you're doing in the home builders. Does that look that bearish to you? Well, we know interest rates are gonna hurt, but these aren't people going necessarily for mortgages. We don't know what they're doing. They're going to a home builder. And it's not bullish for them, but it's, uh, the market probably is gonna fight a battle at 96. Why? Because we have the spring summer markets right ahead of us and people want those homes. So did it change the game? A little bit. Did it change it dramatically? Not really. It, it's probably still, they're gonna be just fine. Energy sector, well, you can come down here to the 18-day average. I know I've done my job with you in saying the 200-day average is your resistance. You're staying overbought. It seems to be that we're fighting a battle between the 18 and the 200-day average in gray, and that's what we did. We didn't make a run up to the 100-day in the green or the upper Bollinger Band. Momentum turning down may be more of a correction here. Now, the market that's got a headache from this are the metals, not just gold, the metals. The enemy of gold is a strong dollar, dollar soars today. The enemy of gold is high interest rates since this doesn't pay interest. Where are you? Coming into the first challenge now of the 100-day average. You may, if you drop even more, get to the 200. You're under the Bollinger Band. So the question is, and you'll, I think we'll have an answer possibly tomorrow since you closed at the bottom of the range today. If you make a lower low today and you close in the bottom of the range, very bottom, watch out. You could be going down to this number. It 
should fight to try to get back in to the uh, Bollinger Band, but that'll require markets around it not panicking tonight because the break in America is gonna go to Asia, then Europe, and right back. We're not talking a crash, we're talking a normal correction day. That's what today was. Don't read more into it than that. Silver, all we had is a rally back to the zone where the market decides what to do, the 18-day average, and it failed there. So it's oversold, it's already at the Bollinger Band bottom. I think the pros are gonna cover shorts. I don't think they're gonna add to shorts. Same thing in the copper. You're down to the lower Bollinger Band, you're oversold. This is where I think pros are covering shorts. So while other people are panicking, I'm the voice, I hope, of reason saying, no, 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 let's understand this is a correction not a peak to trough one, a normal correction in the market. And there might be more of a series of them. It's a three-step dance. I just went through that, I won't do it again. We've got to see how this plays out. Look where the bonds went. 200 day average right here in the Bollinger Band. What do you think I think the pros are doing tonight? Covering, and today, I think in the futures, they're covering shorts. They'll put them out on rallies if they embed in the futures. And guess what the futures did? They embedded. So that tells me, yes, there'll be some short covering, but on rallies, there's going to be willing sellers until that embedded reading is lost in this market. In the dollar index, you're up and over the upper band. I've been saying on the dollar, if you watch my futures video, if you clear this 104.80 Air, the, the 104 area, let's call it, now you're up higher than that. You could go to 106.80, 107. It's very possible. Our price counts, if you haven't gotten price counts, go to our website under free offers, that's irapstein.com, sign up for those. It gives you an idea where these markets go. We cover the interest rates, we cover the metals, we cover the currencies. We do everything that you got these ETFs on, and that's where the beauty of them comes in. Then we get to the, uh, the euro. Well, obviously, if the dollar's going up like this right now, the euro's gonna get hurt. And what this does for Europe is they're looking at what America's doing, and now they have to come to grips with the fact that we're not moving our interest rates anytime soon. If you think that, you are all by yourself out there, okay? This report today was the hammer and the nail. March isn't gonna happen. I don't know that May will happen either. June, if, I, I wanna repeat this again, if um, unemployment or employment goes, let's call it unemployment rises, which is what the Fed wants to see, and if that causes less buying power in the economy, then we can start talking eventually when the Fed cuts rates. But under the current circumstances that you have, including today's report, why in the heck is the Fed thinking of cutting rates? There's not one piece of data that I see, and I am not as good as these other people out there that can tell you when it may happen or not happen. I, I can just read report to report, and there's nothing in this that I think gets a Fed member to say, it is time right now, we have to get ahead of the curve, the economy's weakening. What would you be talking about? Even look at the earnings. Yes, not every company beats, you know that, but the vast majority have done a pretty good job. So you put it all together, that's your game plan. That's how you work with it. So do yourself a favor. Go to our website, take advantage of some of those offers. They're gonna, I think, open your eyes up to ideas. It's iraepstein.com, free offers. I'll see you first thing in the morning.